Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out here to do a gauntlet test of the famous Browning design of 1911, which is the Colt model 1911. Guys, this served our standard big army, big military for 75 years. It continued on in Marine Corps use until just last year when MARSOC finally dropped theirs and moved over to the Glock 19. So this handgun served our country in some capacity, and there's probably some still in service for over 100 years. Okay, so just about every modern firearm can trace its lineage back to this design, the Browning action, the tilting breech action. So let's find out today just how reliable the original design is. Now this gun differs from the original design in one major way. This one has the internal safety on the firing pin so you can technically leave it with the hammer down on a live round. However, the government models that were issued to the military did not have that internal safety. The military, instructed you to carry the, the hammer down on an empty chamber, pull the weapon out of the holster and charge it and shoot it. Most Americans though, myself included, when they carry 1911s, they carry them in what we call condition one or cocked and locked. Hammers back, safety on. I don't know which way to test it. Do I test it to the government standard or do I test it to the carry standard? I'm gonna test it to the carry standard because like I said, it's 2018 and people who are carrying 1911s are going to more, most likely carry them like this. This presents a possible problem because once debris gets right here in front of the firing pin, if the hammer can't make solid contact, it won't ignite that round. So we will be testing the gun in the cocked and locked position. We are using standard government model magazines and I know guys there are, there's a, a virtual smorgasbord of 1911 magazines out there. Instead of picking a favorite, I'm using the magazine that came with this gun, which is a seven shot standard GI magazine. These are all standard seven shot GI magazines, just like the one that shipped with this gun. So if we have a magazine failure, you know, we'll talk about it, but we're gonna use just standard equipment here. All right, so our first test is what we call the elemental test. And the elemental test is, is we're gonna dunk it in the water, fire. Dunk it in the sand, fire, rinse. Dunk it in the dirt fire, rinse, dunk it in the mud, fire, and end the first battery of tests. That's the elemental test. We expect every gun to pass that with minimal issues, actually no issues. It's simulating dropping the gun on the ground in water, sand, dirt, or mud, and picking it up in case you were in a fight for your life. Now, I'll state this now, early on. These tests are non-scientific. These are purely for entertainment. However, I personally expect every gun that we test to make it through the first test. If it doesn't, in my mind, the gun might not, be, not, might not be ideal for concealed carry or for everyday carry. That's just my personal opinion. You draw your own conclusions. Non-scientific test, primarily for entertainment purposes only. If the gun makes it through the elemental test, then we go to the gauntlet, and that's designed to cause the gun to fail. Some guns have made it all the way through with minimal failures or no failures at all. And that's where we go water, sand, dirt, and mud, and no rinse cycle in between. We have enough magazines out here, thanks to our friends from Gun Mag Warehouse and uh, we, can, we can do the test fire to confirm function before we actually start the tests because we need a minimum of four magazines to do the test and most guns only ship with one or two magazines from the factory. Gun Mag Warehouse does send these magazines to us at no cost. Uh, they do not send it with a paycheck. We take no money from them. They just help us out by giving us enough magazines to do our testing and videos like this or when we're you know, just talking about other firearms, okay? So yes, we do get magazines from Gun Mag Warehouse, but I was buying those magazines from them before we had any type of relationship whatsoever where they're helping us out here on the channel because they have a ton of magazines at really good prices. All right, so we make the weapon ready. And right now I'm just gonna test fire it to confirm function. Cocked and locked, hammer's back, safety's on. And let's see how this old classic Colt Series 80 does. She's working just fine. It's important to note, guys, that we are using 230 grain Fiocchi ammunition. Fiocchi is the standard that we use to keep it consistent throughout all of our testing. Okay, we've confirmed function. Let's go ahead and make the weapon ready for the elemental test. Seven rounds in, gun's cocked and locked. Put it in the water. Now, guys, we have cleaned this pistol with CLP before the video, all right? And now, Pull out the water and fire. All 
Yep, I knew I was going to flinch. <laughs> Didn't lock open. And the magazine. Wow. Wow, that magazine was stuck in there, guys, just from the water. Magazines go in freely. That one's dropping out. Okay, cocked and locked. Let's put it in the sand. Push it down on one side. Flip it over. Push it down on the other side. And then fire. I really had to pull on that trigger, guys. That magazine came right out. Uh, that trigger must have got some sand in it somewhere. And I was really having to pull on it to get it to work, but it did fire. All right, now we move over to the dirt. That safety's sticking. Put it in the dirt, push it down. Flip her over, push her down, and here we go. And we have a failure to go into battery. Hmm. And she locked open that time. Magazine came out, so we had a failure to go into battery. Stiff trigger pull, the trigger pull I can't count as a failure. So, all right, clean it off. And now we go over to the mud. The controls are getting a little bit sticky, guys. Okay, just lay it in the mud on both sides. All right. And we have a failure to go into battery. Another failure to go into battery. Another failure to go into battery. Another failure to go into battery. Into battery. Got it. and it locked open. I'm kind of iffy on whether or not I think this thing can make it through the gauntlet. I know it's not gonna make it, but we'll do it anyway. So what we do now is we just rinse the gun off in its own dirty water. Make sure the magazines are as clean as we can get them. We do not clean or lubricate the pistol. And now we reset the test, guys. Load up our magazines with the Fioki 230 grain ball. We go from water to sand to dirt to mud. And uh, I don't think our old 1911 is going to do so well. See you in a few minutes. It's time for the gauntlet in the old Series 80 1911. All right, guys, it seems like the problems that we were having in the first series of tests could have been magazine related. So perhaps a Wilson Combat magazine or something could have changed that function. Surprisingly, the gun failing when it did fail uh, had nothing to do with the hammer being carried in the cocked and locked position. So the failures we had were failures to go into battery that I solved by just tapping the rear of the slide. All right, so here we go into the gauntlet. This is designed to cause failures, and it usually does. Very sluggish already, guys. came right out, locked open, go straight to the sand, push it down, oh yeah, push it down and put something over it, All right, and then we flip it over, push it down, flip some stuff over it, and now we definitely have stuff in the back, all right, I'm just going to tap it, I'm not going to try to clear it, you can see there's tons of stuff between the hammer and the firing pin, and click, no bang. <laughs> All right, so 
a uh, couple of cocks got the gun to eventually fire failure to go into battery failure to go into battery failure to go into battery So you can see the slide stops not engaged and the slide isn't going home. All right guys, gonna stop the test there. The gun didn't make it through the sand test. Um, it's not working, there's no way to, woo! Well, let's fire this around and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> the old girl <laughs> doesn't want to give up the ghost. All right, and it locked open. Okay. <laughs> I was ready to call it quits, guys. I didn't think she was going to go any further. Just want some more. See, I released the slide. You can see it's out of its notch, and uh, it's not going home. All right, safety's on. Put it in the dirt, press it down, put some dirt on it, flip it over, press it down, put some dirt up on it. All right, you can see once again, really had to push that safety off. That's pretty nasty in there. All right, took an extra cock of the hammer. Again, guys, it's not in its locked recess. I, okay, I don't want to be unsafe. Just when I'm ready to call it quits, the darn 1911 wants to play some more. Okay, guys, I can't get to go into battery. Okay, let's see. All right, I quit. It's over. I'm really going to quit this time. I'm going to call the test. The 1911 failed. Okay, we're really calling it this time, guys. She was messing with me. Uh, I can't even get the magazine out now. Oh, there we go. All right, that's it, guys. So, yeah. Let's break the gun apart, rinse it off in the garden hose, and see if it returns to function. But um, wow, what an abysmal performance from a 100-year-old handgun design. I really expected it to do much better. Now, some of the problems we experienced in the first series of tests could have very well been magazine-related. Some Wilson magazines or Chip McCormick magazines or something like that may have allowed it to work. We don't know. But once we got to the gauntlet, no bueno, man. The thing's dead. So let's go clean her up and see if we can get her working just with a wash-off. All right, guys, we're trying to rinse this thing off. It's not in its locked recess. It's just like in the tests, I can't get this slide. Well, there we go. Okay, I got the slide to go home. The weapon is empty. There's no magazine in it. The chamber's empty. It's, uh, for whatever reason, it's really struggling with going home. So we're gonna take the plunger out. Try not to lose any of these tiny pieces. And rinse this bad boy off in the water. And see if we can get it working again. Come on. Oh yeah. There's sand in every little nook and cranny. All right, the recoil spring and the barrel out. Yeah, it's, I mean, this, oh my gosh, is that gritty? Oh man, there's sand inside the thing. All right, so let's rinse this guy off. Boy, we're gonna have our work cut out for us tonight when we get back to the shop cleaning guns. This is, this is how you make a gun rust if you don't thoroughly clean it.
major components cleaned up. Now we have the smaller ones to rinse off here real quick. Put this bad boy back together. It's amazing how much more simple handguns have become over the years than the good old 1911. All these parts in the field would be a little bit challenging. I always do this backwards to keep track of. Come on, get in there. It's a lot easier if you don't have the recoil spring in there. All right. I always screw up, put the recoil spring in first. All right. That's my little trick. I put the drop link down, assemble everything upside down. I can line the rails up. Come on. I get it right about there, I flip it over, make sure your safety's down. And then that pretty much lines your drop link up for your cross pin. And avoid the idiot mark by putting a takedown notch right there and just pushing the pin in. All right. Come on. <laughs> it's still doing it, man. It's not in its locking recess. It's not in its locking recess. And all right, we got the sled to get home. Let's see if this thing's gonna fire. I think there's debris inside the actual trigger mechanism, even after the rinse off. It's getting no better. All right, so we're still having some problems with the slide sticking to the rear, even after rinsing it off in the uh, the spigot. So hit the slide release. It just minutely goes forward and won't go into battery, but we've gotten it to the point where I'm not beating my palm against it where we can actually get it to go into battery. There's something in the trigger mechanism. Let's see if it's gonna fire though. Try a different magazine. One round fell out. Okay, slingshot got it to go home. Huh. Got one round left in here. Slingshot's getting it working. Just the slide stop's not working. Didn't lock open. Whew! So I learned a couple of things today, guys. The 1911 isn't nearly as reliable as I once thought it was. And when the slide stop wasn't working, working now when the slide stop wasn't working and I was having you tap the slide home in this particular instance when I pulled the slide to the rear and let it go it did go into battery uh, before this I was never that big of a fan of the whole slingshot method but um, you can't argue with actual results at least in the case of this handgun twice we tried it and twice it chambered around whereas before when we were just releasing it with a slide stop which it's clearly intended to be released with the slide stop. You can see how John Browning designed it. There's, there's serrations on the top and it's curved up for the contour of your thumb, but slingshotting it got, uh, slingshotting it got at home. What do I think? Guys, totally unreliable. Now, is the magazine at fault? Very well could be playing a part in that, but um, yeah, it's sad. I love the 1911. It's one of my favorite handguns. But 100 years later, there are much better products on the market. My business partner, when he sees this video, I'm never gonna hear the end of it because I love 1911s. 
Dave, don't even come into my office. I don't want to hear it. I'm going to stick my fingers in my ears. I still like carrying a 1911 every once in a while. I want to get dressed up with a nice leather holster from Savoy Leather. It's, it's more of a fashion statement. I just hope I don't ever have to drop it in water, sand, dirt, or mud because it may not work so well. All right, guys, that's it. We uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I definitely learned something here this afternoon. Again, this is for entertainment purposes only, but I put some value on it, and I have definitely learned something about the 1911. I didn't know about it before. I hope maybe you got something from this video as well. If you'd like to support us here on the Military Arms channel, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can become a Patreon supporter. Over on Patreon, we give you all sorts of behind the scenes information. You get early release videos, live streams, and really good deals from our web store, coppercustom.com. We sell stuff to our Patreons below map pricing, and we do all sorts of stuff to try to get back to you because YouTube has cut us off financially. We're 100% fan supported. And we do that through Patreon, and we do that through Forged from Freedom in the map collection with our own line of shirts. Hopefully you can see it through the muddy raincoat, jacket, poncho, whatever you want to call it. So pick up a shirt that does support us here at the channel. Swing by, become a Patreon supporter. There's a lot of cool stuff, behind the scenes stuff that you know you get nowhere else. And also check us out at Copper Custom. Guys, this is our 10th year doing these videos. We hope you enjoy them. P please, down below, ask for your next handgun. We got a whole bunch to get through. But um, yeah, I love these videos and we get a lot of requests for them. We'll talk to you guys soon.